I love fashion. I love data. And when they merge together and we get data about my own personal wardrobe and how I'm using it, well, that's simply the best combination I could ask for. I have pieces cataloged. How much money have I spent on clothes? Secondhand pieces still only make up percent of my wardrobe. How much of my wardrobe have I actually used? I cataloged my entire wardrobe six months ago and I have been tracking what I wear every day since. Ever since I started, I have been waiting for the day that I would have some solid long-term data that I could examine. And the day has finally come. I have all the stats in the palm of my hand and today we're gonna break it all down. We're gonna look at composition, what my wardrobe is actually made up of, usage, how much I actually wear, what I own, and investment. What is the actual financial value behind all this? First, a little background context. I track my outfits on Index. This video is not sponsored by them at all, but I do work with them as a stylist. And they just launched sort of a bonus premium subscription called Index Insider. That's $5 a month annually. All the free features I've ever shown before on this app are staying free. Don't worry, but the premium subscription gives you access to things like all the stats I'll be analyzing in this video. As a stylist on the app, I do get a free premium subscription, so shout out to them for that. But again, not sponsored, no requirement to make this video. Honestly, I just knew I wanted to make a video about this ever since I heard they were coming out with analytics. So with all that said, let's get into it. The first stat is that I have 320 pieces cataloged altogether. Definitely a sizable wardrobe. Although 33% of that, so about 105 of those 320 pieces are accessories, jewelry, and bags, which still leaves us with a total of 215 pieces for actual clothes and shoes. To further break down the composition by category, we can see here 32% of my wardrobe is tops. 103 tops seems kind of insane to me, but that does span all four seasons and includes vests and sweaters and like layering. So if you divide it by season, it's like 20 tops per season, which doesn't seem so bad. Not that the boundaries of my wardrobe are actually that seasonally rigid, but it makes me feel better to think of it that way. Next, we have accessories at 16%. I have 51 accessories logged in here. This being a top category makes a lot of sense to me because there are so many subcategories. It includes all my hats, sunglasses, scarves, belts, fun socks, hair accessories, etc. Next is bottoms at 14%. I have 44 of them. I think it makes sense that this category is on the higher end. You need bottoms pretty much every day. And this spans all four seasons as well. We've got skirts, we've got shorts, we've got pants. And I also put my overalls in this category. Next, we have jewelry at 11%, another sort of accessory. And honestly, I definitely own way more than 34 pieces of jewelry, particularly earrings in my real life jewelry box. It is frankly in dire need of a deep clean out. But this is the jewelry I cataloged because it's the pieces I actually wear. One piece items are 9% of my wardrobe. This is just dresses and one jumpsuit. So 27 dresses. Hey, honestly, 27 dresses does sound excessive to me, but I do actually wear dresses very often. I'm wearing one right now and that's not even on purpose. I just wear them very frequently. <laughs> We're getting to the bottom here with outerwear at 7%. I own 23 jackets or coats. Honestly, I need to like check myself and put myself on a jacket buying ban because at least six of these have been purchased like in the past six months. I've just been in sort of a, a jacket phase, but we really don't need any more. Finally, at 6%, I have 20 bags. And at 5%, I have 17 pairs of shoes. Overall, the actual numerical count of some of these categories definitely seems a bit excessive to me. But of course, you know, fashion and styling is my job and also one of my greatest interests and hobbies and dare I say passions in life. Am I still in need of a closet clean out? Yes, but I don't think I would actually get rid of that many things. All this said, the percentages, the actual proportions that each category takes up seem pretty appropriate to me. Tops is really the only category that's significantly bigger and I think that's totally appropriate considering seasonality and the frequency with which you have to wash them. That said, I'd be super curious how people in other climates or other lifestyles might differ in these categories. The other fascinating composition analytic to me is seeing how much of my wardrobe is new, secondhand, or undefined. Because at this point, I almost exclusively shop secondhand, but secondhand pieces still only make up 67% of my wardrobe. I think this is for a few reasons. Firstly, the 12% that is undefined is A, gifts from other people, and B, clothes I made myself, which are all sewn from uh, secondhand fabrics, by the way. But that still leaves us with 21% 
items I got new. I think this is made up of three different categories. One, local or small business purchases. I am much more willing to buy things new if they're from a small local business, an artist or a maker at like a market or festival, maybe a local gift shop, places like that. I don't find myself in those settings all that often, but when I do, I'll often get some jewelry or something because I appreciate supporting something that's not a mega corporation. Second category, gifted pieces from sponsorships. Those are all brands with sustainability and or fair labor certifications because I only work with clothing brands that meet certain standards, but it's still new stuff. And normally each sponsorship includes gifting, you know, a handful of items. So three or four sponsored videos can easily add up to like 20 new things in my wardrobe. And finally, I do have some things that I just bought myself from a regular first-hand store like Target or something. I'm not a purist. I don't think I've purchased anything wardrobe-wise from a corporation like that in a couple years at this point, except maybe like socks. But of course I still have many of those pieces I bought before and I continue to try to put them to good use. I also just want to say I generally haven't bought any clothes from big corporations in the past couple years because I haven't needed any. My wardrobe needs are obviously beyond met. <laughs> And pretty much everything I buy now is just for fun or for styling. So it just feels totally unnecessary for me personally to shop from fast fashion, big corporations, that kind of place. I'm just not trying to shame anyone for needing to buy clothes from a big corporation. We all need to do that sometimes. I am not on any kind of consumption pedestal and I'm not trying to project any puritanical consumption standards onto anyone else. We're all doing our best. All right, those are all the composition analytics I'm going to be talking about today. Index did actually give me even more information about like the color breakdown of my wardrobe, the seasonal composition, how long I've had certain pieces, which is really cool and interesting for me, but I wasn't sure it would be really cool and interesting for you all. So I just tried to stick to the highlights, but if you want a second video with even more detailed analytics into my closet, let me know. All right, now that we have seen what makes up my wardrobe, let's get into how I have actually used it over the past six months. First question, how much of my wardrobe have I actually used? The answer is, drum roll please, I can't do that with just one hand, 64%. So 36% of my wardrobe has gone untouched for six whole months. Now, seasonality plays a big role in this. It hasn't been truly cold where I live in the past six months, from March to September. So a lot of sweaters, jackets, and coats are out, but I do think that still leaves plenty of pieces I could have been wearing and I just didn't. That said, I do not think 64% is too bad. I mean, that is technically most of my wardrobe. And I do make a conscious effort to get as much wear from all of my things as I can. I honestly think tracking my clothes and having them all cataloged has actually helped me remember more to switch up what I'm wearing and have more variation. Still though, that's like over a hundred things unworn at all in six months. This might inspire a new challenge in me. I don't know. I think it would be fun to see like how quickly I can actually wear every single thing I own. Let me know if you'd want to see that video. Next, we can see the average number of wears per piece. So in my total wardrobe, each piece was worn an average of four times in the past six months, which honestly seems higher than I would expect considering like a third of the things have been worn zero times. However, we can see shoes and bags play a pretty big role in this number because there's less of them, so they get a lot more repeat use. Each pair of shoes was worn an average of 11 times, and each bag was used an average of nine times. Realistically, I've not actually been wearing each pair of shoes 11 times, but rather wearing a few pairs like 30 to 40 times and a bunch of other pairs not really at all. Same with bags. I think we probably have a similar pattern with jewelry. Each piece, oh, I'm falling over. Each piece was worn an average of six times, but I'm sure certain pieces had much higher levels of wear and certain pieces definitely much less. For the other categories, I think the averages are probably more closely aligned with actual typical wears, though of course there's still variation. My bottoms were worn an average of four times each, accessories three times each, tops two times each. That's definitely skewed by half of them not being worn at all. And outerwear two times each. And that seems like weirdly good for most of them not being worn at all, but I have a lot more tops than outerwear, so it makes sense. Oh, and dresses two times each as well. See, they're getting just as much wear as my tops are. I need 27 dresses. We can also see the average cost per wear per category. Again, this is very skewed to only include the cost of things I bought in the past six months or a little more. I tried to retroactively add prices for some things I bought before I started cataloging, but obviously this is really more specifically to the past six months, things I bought in that time and how often I've worn those. So the average cost per wear for those pieces is currently 
$3, with outerwear being much higher at $8, probably because I just thrifted a bunch of jackets all around $8 that I haven't worn at all yet, and the rest range from $2 to $4 for those other recent purchases. Altogether, quite low. I feel very confident that it's actually lower to this in the long term of my wares and my spending. I would assume it's like well under a dollar typically, because I thrift almost everything. So if you wear your clothes a normal amount and you get them really inexpensively at the thrift store, it just sort of happens automatically. Next, we can look at the number of wares by new versus secondhand versus undefined items. And as you can see, it's exactly the same for all of them. Four wares on average in each category. All three categories are serving me equally well. I love to see that. We can also see the average cost per wear of new versus secondhand, and secondhand is actually higher right now. Probably, again, because I keep thrifting jackets that I haven't worn yet, but we'll get that number down. I'm gonna have to check in on all this again after like a year of tracking. Finally, possibly the most interesting stat to me in the usage category is my most and least worn items. I mean, least worn is just the entire third of my closet that I didn't wear at all. Sort of hodgepodge of lots of different types of things, but a large proportion is definitely sweaters and long sleeve tops. But then the most worn is interesting because in the top 10, not a single one is a top. It's my go-to summer shoes, my go-to jewelry, my go-to bags, all those everyday staples that get the most repeated wear. And of course, the three most comfy bottoms I own that I still like the look of enough to wear them out of the house. These feel like the most comfortable I can be while still looking stylish so I default to them very often. Also, these are my rock climbing shorts, so I wore them to the climbing gym like all the time, and I think that's actually the main reason they're in here. I feel like there's such a weird social pressure to not repeat tops too often, but repeating bottoms often is totally fine. I mean, you can see here in like my calendar view of what I wear every day throughout the summer, I'm repeating the same shorts constantly, but I feel the need to have a lot more variation in the tops, which is also because I wash my tops every time I wear them. You don't need to do that with bottoms, so you can wear them more frequently. So obviously no particular top is my most worn item, but if I want to see my most worn tops, I can switch to that view as well. And it's funny that here my color preferences are immediately revealed. It is almost entirely blues and neutrals with one greenish top, and one yellow t-shirt. Yellow's not usually one of my go-tos, but I've just been really into this shirt. I can also see the top most and least worn in any category, not just shirts. Here are some examples. I don't feel as compelled to analyze all these because we already got sort of an overview with things like bags, shoes, jewelry, bottoms, but here they are. I am super excited to keep tracking this stuff for like a full calendar year and see the most and least worn pieces then because right now I think it reflects seasonality more than anything else. And I feel like after a full year, instead of being reflective of the seasons, it will truly be reflective of like my base wardrobe preferences and what I actually like and dislike wearing. So I can't wait to see what that reveals. All right, now it is time to get into the financial side of things. How much money has gone into my wardrobe in the past six months, what I'm spending it on, all that good stuff. First stat, how much money have I spent on clothes since I started logging them here? The grand total is $300. And $30. I started cataloging in March, but I did actually try to go back and add anything I had bought for my wardrobe before then in 2024. I like keep my own little financial spending records for budget reasons. So I had all that information somewhere else and I tried to put it all in here. I'm sure I probably still ended up missing things, but I'm hoping this is a relatively accurate portrayal of the money I have spent on clothing, not just in the past six months, but in 2024 so far. Obviously everyone's like income and budget and priority and comfortability with spending on clothes is going to be very different. But for me and my budget, I am totally comfortable with this number. Honestly, I feared it would be higher, but that is really the beauty of thrifting. All my clothes cost like five to $15. <laughs> we can also see how much I spent on each different category in my wardrobe. I spent $109 on tops this year. That makes sense because I've bought the most of them. Next is $79 on outerwear, which makes sense because outerwear tends to be priced a little higher even at the thrift store. Bottoms were $41. Dresses were $36. Jewelry was $26. And then bags, shoes, and accessories were $12, $12, and $10 respectively. Overall, this honestly feels kind of impressively low for almost nine months of shopping for clothing from someone who's job is fashion and who loves fashion, especially considering I have most definitely bought more than I actually need. We can also see the average spend per piece per category. So different categories tend to be more or less expensive, but as you can see, the average cost ranges from three to $12. And that's on 
thrifting. This is also telling me I have bought way too many tops this year because if I spent $109 on tops and they were $6 on average, that means I bought 18 tops, which seems kind of insane to me. But you see why I'm so tempted with these prices. Every time there's a cool top that's $6 at the thrift store, I'm like, might as well try it out. That's sort of the downside of thrifting. It makes it much harder to resist accumulating stuff. Finally, we can also see what I spent month by month. Although I'm not great at remembering to add the dates that I acquire things. I just sort of put them in here, but then I forget to actually like log a date of when I bought it. So I don't know how accurate this is, but I think it generally reflects pretty typical shopping habits. Pretty typical for me, most months, are lower. Every few months, there's a higher spike. Sometimes when you're shopping for like a new season that's starting, that tends to happen for me. But yeah, generally a little bit up and down, but nothing that's a super crazy outlier. <sighs> All right, y'all. There we have it. You now have a very intimate yet mathematical peek into my wardrobe, how I've worn it, and what I've spent on it in the past six plus months. I would love to hear how my stats compare to anyone else's, if any of you have gotten Index Insider, or if you track these things in any other way. As a person who is super into thrifting and also is a full-time fashion content creator, as my job. I feel like my stats could be quite different from the average person, but they could also be more similar than I expect. I don't know. I try not to just buy things like for the video or for the content or to think like I'm a fashion YouTuber, so I get to buy more, but I know it just sort of happens naturally, even if I'm not intentionally thinking of it as like an excuse to buy things. I don't know. I have no idea how different or similar this might be to average. So I would be super curious to know if any of you have this information about your own wardrobes. If you're interested, you can also sign up for Index for free through the link in my description. Again, access to all these stats and other premium features is $5 a month annually, but all the cataloging and making outfits and everything is totally free. And you can also get a $10 credit if you use code BEEPWORLD when you sign up. And of course, as always, you can also book a personal styling lookbook with me through Index if you want to, and it's in your budget. That is linked below as well. Finally, before I end this video, I have to say thank you so, so much for 100,000 subscribers. It's honestly kind of mind boggling to me that that many people like what I do on here enough to actively, you know, click the subscribe button and want to see me again. It just means so, so much to me that you all want to see these videos. When I first started YouTube, I honestly never thought I would get this far. And your viewership and support has literally allowed this to become my full-time job. It's how I got to do personal styling on Index. And I honestly don't know what I would be doing right now if I weren't doing this. Thank you so, so much for being here. And of course, if you're just joining the channel now, I'm also so, so grateful for your presence. And if you do, leave a comment, watch another video, or subscribe. I heard I might do a 100k subscriber special video. I don't know what that would be, but if there's anything you want to see or you have any ideas, drop them in the comments. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye!